Hello, everyone. This is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is Raising Your Vibratory Level. Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to voluntarily support this channel, you can do so on Patreon. When you join, you get advanced episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, a Patreon email where we can talk back and forth, and also a Patreon chat uh, that you can use and interact with others as well. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Next up, uh, private lessons. Uh, I've had several uh, of my students contact me recently. Uh, Michael H. was one of them. I shared with you his review, and I recently got uh, another review, too, from one of my patients, um, and uh, they're doing very well, and they've begun projecting. Uh, I don't want to use their real names because some folks like to keep that under wraps. Unfortunately, astral projection is still a little bit on the shady side in society. At any rate, if you're interested, you will find my email in the description, and I can send you their reviews if you're interested, as well as more information about the private lesson. Okay, um, before we get started, I have to share some sad news. Robert Bruce, the author of Astral Dynamics, a book which has never left my desktop since I purchased it, has passed on and has gone to the next plane of existence. Uh, it's tough not to feel sad, but let's all wish him, Mr. Robert Bruce, bon voyage. Okay, this episode, uh, Raising Your Vibratory Level, is going to be based on uh, William Bowman's book, Adventures Beyond the Body. Uh, William Bullman, for anyone who's not so, uh, aware of him, he's been in the business for you know teaching astral projection for over 40 years. And I've read his books. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, so have no fear there. Today, we're going to be uh, examining two areas of his book. First, amplifying the vibrational state and enhancing memory recall. Of course, I'll be including my two cents and experience as well. When trying to astral project, many people ask me, I know this vibrational level has to kick in at some point. How do I make that happen? And then once it happens, then they wanna know how can I better recall what actually occurs so that when I project, and I return to my body, I don't forget everything because that is a very real possibility. So let's see what um, William Bullman has to say about amplifying the vibrational state. He says it is possible to amplify the vibrational state from a slight internal vibration to a complete separation from the physical body. This can be accomplished by mentally encouraging the slight vibrations to build, expand, and then spread throughout the body. It's quite common for some of us, and you're, you're lucky, I'm one of these people, you're lucky if you're one of them too. It's quite common for some of us to awaken during various stages of sleep, and you may even want to set an alarm if that's not you, if you want to project that is. At any rate, it's, it's many of us, though, wake up naturally after various stages, and we may experience a slight internal vibration and or numbness at the back of the neck or in the legs or arms. If you felt this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and that explanation is probably the best one that I can give as well. Now, many people just don't know where to go from there. So they just ignore it, fall back to sleep, or wait until the vibrations slowly uh, stop, basically wasting a possible astral projection opportunity. He goes on to say, this is often experienced during REM sleep or rapid eye movement or dream sleep. Um, and during lucid dreams, during the light stages of alpha, which is the early stages of sleep, and the hypnagogic state. The hypnagogic state 
is a state where you're not quite asleep, but you're not really awake either. And you can often have very interesting hypnagogic imagery. For instance, when I was a kid, I, w I went into a hypnagogic state lying on my back in my bed. And before I knew it, I was watching above me a Popeye cartoon. And it was going on for a while before I started realizing how can there be a Popeye cartoon playing above my bed? Uh, keep in mind, this was back in the late 60s. There wasn't even a dream of technology like that yet. But I was in a hypnagogic state. I was seeing this kind of imagery. Now, of course, the key to this technique is to recognize the initial vibrations and numbness when they occur. The best way to do this is to pay attention to the subtle energy fluctuations occurring during the initial stages of sleep, dreams, and relaxation. Awareness. Awareness is the key here. Awareness of our internal sensations, feelings, and perceptions is an important first step in noticing our internal vibrations. Okay, so what do we do? From now on, immediately upon awakening or when drifting in and out of sleep, remain physically still and completely relaxed. Notice any internal energy changes, vibrations, numbness, tingling, or other unusual sensations. When these sensations occur, mentally encourage the vibrations and accompanying sensations to expand throughout your body. Flow with the sensations and allow them to spread through your body and mind. After the vibrational sensations and the numbness have spread throughout your body, direct yourself away from your body. Maintain your complete attention and thought away from your physical body and direct yourself to another area of your home. This is something which I've suggested in the past you do with a variety of exercises. One thing you want to have down pat in your mind is somewhere outside of your room. It could be in your house. It could be in somebody else's house if you're very, very familiar with them. But make sure, let's say it's your living room. Make sure that you sit in your living room and you spend some amount of time memorizing what's there, uh, where you're sitting, how it feels, what you can see. Really get into your beingness in that place. Lock it tightly in your memory so that no matter where you are in the world, you can close your eyes and in that instant, you can be back, let's say, in your favorite easy chair, sitting there in your living room. That's really important that you have that image tightly packed and tightly saved um, so that you can summon it at any time. So he goes then, maintain your complete attention and thought away from your physical body and direct yourself to another area of your home. As usual, as it may sound, uh, as unusual as it may sound, this is a very natural thing to do. The key is to simply notice and then encourage the subtle non-physical changes that occur within us. So what he's talking about there is you must become acutely aware of even the smallest changes when you go into altered states. When you're lying down on your bed or you're sitting in your favorite easy chair in a quiet, comfortable space and maybe you're meditating, whatever it is you're doing, be very aware if you're going to sleep. Take the time. Don't have a fast transition to sleep, but notice any differences. Notice any changes in your body so that you can become very aware if a slight tingling happens anywhere else or a slight numbness. Because once you are aware of that sensation, then you can concentrate on spreading it throughout your body. And that's how you're raising your vibratory level. And that is how you know, that's the springboard to actual projection. And having this image tightly formed in your mind of, say, somewhere else in your home 
having that tightly held will allow you then to focus your thought away from your body, away from your bedroom to that space, and then will yourself to that space. And if you're at the right vibrational state, you'll find yourself out of your body in that space. Once you're there, now you can go anywhere else. And as I've said before, the fastest you get away from your physical body, the better. The second part of what I want to talk about with um, William Bullman here uh, is enhancing memory recall. Now, I have shared with you in the past my method to enhance my memory recall. It's actually a, uh, two different steps. The first is while I'm projecting, I am uh, narrating my experience. And I'm saying, okay, now I'm, I'm flying over this mysterious green ocean here on this planet, and I'm looking for any sort of life. I can't see anything right now. Uh, I'm wondering if there's any deep sea creatures in here that might surprise me. Uh, oh, I see some land on the shore there. I see a little bit of greenery. Let's head towards there. So the whole time I'm narrating this experience, and essentially what I'm doing is I am creating a story. Think back to how our ancestors, before writing ever became a thing, ever became invented or common, we had myths and stories from our ancestors that came down generation after generation after generation. How did they do it without writing? They did it by putting it into a story. When you have something woven into a story, it's much easier to remember it because you have a start and that start flows into the body and then the body flows into a conclusion. All very logical. It's a set pattern and there's something about that story and that construction of that experience that allows your brain to lock it in. Whereas if it was just a bunch of disparate facts that you'd forget quickly, which is why uh, many social studies, which is the bastardized history, why many people forget whatever little they were taught in school. It's because your teacher, who was woefully unprepared to teach this subject, believe me, uh, had no idea what they were doing. And so what they did is they threw at you names, they threw at you dates, if uh, you were a good student, trained properly, you remembered it just long enough to spit it onto a piece of paper and get your A, and then you promptly flushed it. That's because for you, it was nothing but a bunch of disconnected information that had no relation to anything of any particular interest to you. However, if someone sat down and told you a story about the challenges that Abraham Lincoln had, for instance, as an early lawyer, or the struggles that he faced uh, as a young, poor man trying to get an education, uh, and then eventually his rise to president of the United States, and, and then being a president over a country that had torn itself apart. If you tell that as a story, he becomes real. You begin to identify with him. So that story becomes part of your story. And it's so much easier then to remember. And that's what we have to do when we astral project. You have to take that disconnected bits that you might see on the astral and connect them into a story so that when you, re, you, you awaken, that you'll have a good chance of remembering that story. Uh, and and that second, the second part of what I do is I've done some self-hypnosis. And you can buy books on self-hypnosis if you like. And I just hypnotize myself uh, into the fact that the minute I get out of bed and my feet touch the floor, all of the memories that I had from projections and dreams come flooding back to me. That's just a self hypnotic suggestion. So if that's something you're interested in, just buy some book on self-hypnosis. It's pretty darn easy, really. Okay, but what does William Bowman say? And he has another perfectly good way to do things. Uh, he says, every time you end an out-of-the-body exploration or experiment, make a firm request for a complete memory transfer to your physical awareness. 
your physical brain and memory function like a computer. Okay, he's he's comparing it to computer. I was comparing it to like a story and a storyteller. The obtained non-physical information must be accurately transferred and stored within your physical consciousness. That's true because you're taking information which was gained in a non-physical way and now you've got to load it into your physical data banks. Now the easiest way he says to accomplish this is to simply request it. Interesting. Many out-of-the-body explorers are unaware of this principle. The result can be a hazy, disjointed memory of their non-physical experiences, as in the clarity technique. You remember the clarity technique uh, is often used when uh, you leave your physical body and your vision, you're either blind or your vision is impaired. Uh, what I normally recommend, and certainly the clarity technique is a part of this, is, you know, get outside your home. So you want, to, you want a little bit of distance between you and your physical body. And then ask for clarity now or ask for, you know, clear vision now. And you'll find that your vision comes in uh, very clearly. Uh, and anyway, he says, as in, as in the clarity technique, the emphasis you place upon your memory request will determine the effectiveness of the results. A firm, focused demand works best. I remember all. He even has an exclamation point there. Ideally, the request for enhanced memory should be made when you're ready to return to your physical form. In other words, right before you get pulled back. That's the ideal bit. This request will often propel you immediately back to your physical body, which is why, if you're going to do it, do it when you start feeling that signal or when things start dimming out a little bit, which is the key to know that, uh-oh, it's time to go back to your body. So that's when, you want to, that's when you want to hit, I remember all. You don't want to do it right away because you might end up getting pulled back uh, too soon. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover. These are very, very obvious questions which come on a regular basis to me about how do I get the vibrational level going, you know, and how do I remember my experiences. So this is information which is of constant interest. Uh, so I think you'll find it, uh, it'll be of help to you. If you found it of help to you, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, subscribe if you haven't already, and 85% of you already have, it's amazing. Uh, and questions and comments. Uh, have you any ideas about how to get your vibrational levels going? There's many different ways out there. Uh, what about how do you remember your experiences? And any comments or questions you have about this, please uh, ask because everybody loves questions and comments. And I know I read every single comment and I try to answer every single question that is asked because I believe if you, do, if you uh, have the time to leave that stuff, then I should have the time to uh, answer it, or at least read it. Uh, so that's my commitment to you. Okay, uh, once again, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.